Hi, my name is Catherine Dumer, and the topic of this presentation is abstract best practices. We were asked to put together um, some guidance for people on how to put together abstracts for the PNCWA annual conference. Um, I'm the conference chair for 2013, the PNCWA 2013 that will be in Bend. So my presentation will cover the components of an abstract. We'll kind of step through the four components of an abstract, go over some things to do and some things not to do, and then some specifics on how to submit the abstract. Um, we'll give you a little bit of information about how the abstracts are evaluated by the technical program committee, and then um, what's next, a little schedule for you. So there are four main components to an abstract. The first component is the problem statement. The second is the approach. The third are the results. And the fourth are the conclusions. So I'm going to step through each of these and then um, give you some examples. Uh, my examples, I should point out, are just one sentence examples. But really, you, know, you can, you can uh, be creative about how much to say about each of these four components. They don't each have to just be one sentence. They could each be a little bitty paragraph if that's what you wanted. So the problem statement is, uh, you know, why do we care about the problem and what practical or scientific gap does your work fill? So this is where you try to engage your audience. And it's good here to remember that this is the same abstract that will be published in the conference program and that attendees will read when they're trying to decide whether or not to attend your presentation. So make it clear in the problem statement that the, what the general topic is. Some examples are, in response to odor complaints received from residents, or our town is currently investigating management strategies to address the impacts of urban development on stream systems. So you can see in these examples that they each have, um, you can see what the main topic's going to be, odor complaints, um, impacts on stream systems. So those are good ways to start out. The second component is the approach. So this is where you explain what you did to get your results. The, um, there's a wide variety of things that people do here. So you might have a technical presentation where you actually did some sampling and testing, or you may have just evaluated some um, different concepts. And this is so that here uh, the the approach can st the the statements can start to vary. But some examples are a comprehensive sampling and flow monitoring program was conducted or our town studied the relationships between stream flow and bed and, stank, bed and bank soil stability of cohesive sediments at 38 sites on 27 tributaries. Uh, so obviously, uh, <clears throat> you need to be specific here. And using numbers, like in the second example, if, you, if there are numbers, is a, is a good way to go. You'll also want to use numbers here in the results, which is the third component of an abstract. Um, we want to, as we'll point out later, it's kind of important not to wade too much into the details here. What you want to do is summarize your findings as briefly as you can while still kind of addressing the basic problem. So some examples are, we found that significant amounts of sulfide were generated upstream of Main Street due to low flow velocities, low slope, and relatively long sewer sections, or our response includes a basket of strategies that mimic natural hydrology. So. Um, <clears throat> I would also point out that this first bullet came from an abstract that actually had a whole series of bullets. So they did the um, odor testing, and then they actually came up with a whole bunch of conclusions. And that's fine as well, as long as you keep it within the 300 word limit of our abstracts. Um, and then your conclusions. So what are the larger implications of your findings? And how do these findings fill the gap you identified in the problem statement? And so this, some examples are, as a result of this study, a multi-pronged hydrogen sulfide control strategy has been implemented, or our town developed a suite of proposed strategies of affordable and implementable solutions. And that summarizes the components of an abstract. So some other resources on general information about how to put together an abstract are here on this slide. These first two are really specific to engineering abstracts, and they're, they're, they're a good place to go. And um, you'll, you'll see that 
one of them looks very familiar <laughs> um, is, is what I based this presentation on. Other things you might find online might lead you to write, you know, three or four page abstracts for, a, you know, like a technical uh, publication. And so you need to be careful um, that you don't get to, uh, that you don't use references that aren't really applicable. And then I've also listed, given a link here to the abstracts from the 2011 PNCWA conference. Um, they're, they're probably good. I didn't read through them all, but uh, it's always good to see what other people have done. So on to the things to do. Um, the, the number one thing to do, in our opinion, is to have your abstract reviewed before you submit it. So that means getting a technical review as well as a grammar editing review. So use your fellow professionals for the technical review. Um, and then, I, like I use my own um, company's editing and formatting people for the grammar and editing review. If you don't have access to them, have your friend read it. Really just make sure somebody else sees it before you turn it in. Um, it's hard to review an abstract that has grammatical errors in it. And it's really great to get um, your peers' technical input on it as well to make sure that you're presenting things in a logical manner. So that's, that's kind of our biggest number one thing to do. Some other things are you know, make the topic relevant. Um, some ways of doing that would be to incorporate you know, hot aspects of your topic like energy conservation or funding sources um, or incorporate a conference focus. Involve other team members if possible. Having a couple people doing the presentation makes it um, a little more interesting sometimes. Um, plan to include lessons learned in your presentation and reference that in the conclusion of your abstract. So it's a sharing how what we've learned and how we've done things is an important part of what WEF and PNCWA provide to its members. And so we really want to encourage that. So even if you found out some things that maybe weren't what you wanted to find out, that's this is a great place to do that. And then for equipment-focused topics, be sure to include detail on the problem statement or condition that can be solved. Project-specific examples are a great way to demonstrate the challenges and the solutions that were implemented with the specific equipment or technology. Then just a few things not to do. Don't submit an abstract that has not been checked. So that's kind of our pet peeve. And then don't get too technical. You know, really save the technical stuff for the presentation. Just include what you need to include to and, you know, prove that you did what you wanted to do. And then uh, don't focus on a comparison with competitors as a means of promoting your work. The, uh, the, the kind of the nitty gritty of submitting the abstract. So all submissions are online at, at this web page. And there's a number of things that you need to have ready when you go to submit the abstract. So it's kind of a long list, but I'll just step through it. So you'll need a username and password if you already have one. And if you don't, it will let you create one. You need to have established a title that's short but descriptive and be ready to put that in. You need the name and the company or organization and email addresses for all the authors. You need to be ready to identify one main presenting author. And then, of course, you have your typed and edited abstract that's less than 300 words. You'll be given the opportunity to choose three topics to associate with the abstract. Um, and the list of topics is in the call for abstracts. And it will also be show up on your screen when you're submitting the abstract. You can uh, put in up to five keywords if you want to have keywords associated with your abstract. And then you'll need to have a biography of that main presenting author ready. And the bio biography can just be a couple of sentences. And then uh, <clears throat> the process is that um, the abstracts all get put into the system, and then uh, the technical program committee reviews them. So each abstract is read and reviewed by um, three to five members of the technical program committee. And then the average score of those reviews is provided to me, the technical program chair, who puts the 120 or so highest ranked abstracts into subject tracks for the conference. Uh, sometimes abstracts don't fit nicely into the subject tracks, and we have to tweak the lineup. And um, it, it isn't always exactly the 
120 highest ranked uh, abstracts that get that get placed in the conference. And then uh, sometimes, because of that, highly rated abstracts don't fit into a track, and we occasionally invite them to a poster presentation. So this is the list of the rating criteria that the that the reviewers see when they look at your abstract and what they're they're using to evaluate it. Um, the quality of the content, the significance for theory or practice, the originality and level of innovativeness, the relevance for the call for abstracts, the quality of the presentation, and then they are allowed to provide an overall recommendation. So uh, what's next? This is just a suggested schedule for you. So we've We've indicated that in the first week of June, or by the first week of June, the presenters will be notified. People who have a have their abstract has been selected for the conference will notify them by the first week of June. And then you have really June, July, and August to develop the presentation as a PowerPoint. Um, in the we recommend that you stop at that point, and by the first week of in the first week of September, have it reviewed to get the technical review and the and the grammar review done. And during the second week. Um, plan to finalize the presentation and copy it to a thumb drive. And then the third week of September is the conference in Bend, and you show up with your thumb drive, and you're ready to go. And my final advice is, you know, don't wait. <laughs> Dive in, give a, you know, take a stab at your abstract so somebody else can look at it and really get thinking early. It's uh, pretty hard to put in a good abstract when you don't start writing it until the day it's due. So. That concludes my presentation, and uh, thank you for watching.